Well, this is the witchcraft shed. It was named by my niece who sleeps in here when she comes up to stay. She's a uh, she's from London and a drummer in a band, and she's a she's a tough cookie, and she's she's more worried by the spiders than the uh, than any of the supernatural activity in here. But this is one of the storage spaces for the um, artifacts of my museum. It's one of three locations. This tends to be the one where objects pass through, and uh, here they are, sort of piled around in a somewhat higgledy piggledy manner. Um, I like things when they arrive to be out, um, for me to look at them and sort of spend time with them. Uh, and you know, even some objects I've had sort of quite a while, sort of you know, like just like them being around. It might seem odd way of keeping things, but. This is sort of part of the life cycle of um, most museums and collections. Most things that you see in your, underneath the glass cabinet spend some time of their life in storage in places like this. They might be in temperature controlled warehouses or they might be in people's back rooms or sheds. But, you know, sometimes in the in an artifact's life, they'll sort of spend in, in, in places like this. And it's quite funny looking at them, seeing them out of context. It gives them a whole it gives them a whole different life. I mean, I've had an interest in folklore um, since childhood and um, it, it sort of grew from there. Um, in the 80s, I started working in the Perham Porth Folk Museum and um, that's where I first sort of became interested in museums and, and curation. Um, in the mid 90s, I got involved in the Museum of Witchcraft up in Boss Castle and um, was involved there for many, many years, written several books o o on the subject. And so I've spent a lot of my life, um, you know, looking at artefacts and I've always kept my eyes open for artefacts because the interesting thing about artefacts is they only become interesting and they only become of value when they go, come into the context of a collection. Because artefacts are little frozen stories, little embodiments of stories. And... Uh, in a way, as a as, as a curator, it's you it's your job to bring out that story. So a lot of these objects you see around are quite are things that are just lying around, and it's it takes a cura, curator's eye to sort of draw out the story from them. Okay, as an example, is look from a charity shop the other week. I saw this. It's like a it's just like a tea towel sort of thing. But it's got a curse on it. Gardener's curse. This is like a commercially produced tea towel with a curse on it. I thought, what an incredible thing. And it's, uh, you know, this would be a very interesting thing to display to people to show that sort of curses are not just things that happened in the uh, dim and distant past. You know, <laughs> these sort of things are around and actually sort of commercially um, commercially available. Oh, something I'm very much looking forward to um, getting out. Uh, the museum had never had a chance to come out before. It was this object here is ooh, a Victorian vampire hunting kit. Wow. So what have we got inside there? So in here we've got a, a mallet with a cross, stakes, we've got a couple of vials here, presumably for um, holy water. In here we have shrunken head. I mean, most people wouldn't have a shed full of such magical <laughs> objects. Is there anything unusual that happens in this shed that could be put down to 
what its contents yes is the short answer yeah sometimes do objects objects do move around and um you do sometimes hear noises coming from here at night and this is par for the course for this kind of collection and you will find that most other people who also have collections like this will have very similar experiences now you'll see behind you there is a um, bowl of holy water Yep, just on the entrance to the shed right, there, just yeah. Just on the entrance to the shed. And this is collected from various holy wells all around Cornwall. And every collection has its own set of contingencies you have to deal with. And this kind of collection has it also had its own kind of contingencies. And this is the sort of thing you have to, you know, be aware of. So it's very handy to have some holy water to hand. <laughs> essentially your smoke alarm is it <laughs> exactly it's like a like a smoke alarm you know for most of the time all of this stuff is is sat here in your shed with with hardly anyone seeing it but the <laughs> hope is that people will you, i mean you want people to to see all of your collection don't you absolutely yes well last summer i i i i run a ran a pop-up pop museum underneath the um, Cornish Bank in the, in the in the middle of Falmouth, and as from this Easter, I will be um, op opening a museum in the um, old High Street in Falmouth, called um, with the Pistry uh, Cabinet of Magic and Folklore, in which hopefully I shall be having a permanent exhibition, which will include um, a library and uh, my whole collection as well. Once you've got the museum up and up and going and you know the majority of the uh, contents of the shed are on display to the public what are you going to use your shed for <laughs> that's a very good question <laughs> tools garden tools <laughs> i think you're going to move no there's always going to be a place for the witchcraft shed i think because there's always going to be objects coming and going and this is a uh, this is a this is this is like a, a sort of a transient waiting room for um, for, for artifacts.